Hello and welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend a few minutes with the staff at Cook Library. I'm Nate Goss, librarian at Cook Library, and I'm here with Melissa Henderson, head of the library's children's department. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Nate. I'm very pleased to be here. Good, glad you're here, too. Melissa is here to offer guidance to all of the confused parents out there, myself included, who desperately want their kids to find the same joy in reading that we have cultivated in ourselves over time. We want our kids to read, we want our kids to enjoy books, but how do we know if a book is right for our child? Is it age appropriate? Is it at the right reading level? Will they even like it? Well, there's no need to panic because the expert is in. Melissa, let's start with a basic question. Let's say you're working the reference desk at the library and a parent asks you for help finding a book for their child. Where do you start? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, What seems like a very simple question, is this book right for my child, is Mm -hmm. actually fraught with all sorts of um, directions that a a librarian can go off in. It really goes into two areas. One is, is this book the right level for my child? If your child's a reader or beginning to read, that's one question. Another question is, um, is this content appropriate for my child? And that's a whole other area that Mm -hmm. we can talk about. And then the next question is, should my child be reading this book, I think, in general, which can mean a couple different things. One of the first things any of the librarians, I think, will do is they'll ask, how old is your child? You know, what age they are, because they could be uh, something, it could be that they want, you're looking for a picture book or you're looking for a book for them to read that the child would read to him or herself. Mm -hmm. But then after that, the next question really is, what do they like? What are they interested in? What does the child like? And you're not just talking about books. You No, in life in in general. And the biggest reason being is that for all ages, really from little children up to high schoolers, one of the most important aspects in encouraging a child to read is the concept of autonomy, Mm. that the child gets to have a say and as much say as possible in choosing what they read for their recreational reading. Mm. Remember, kids are getting assignments all day long in school from really the earliest ages about what they should be reading, what they're supposed to be reading, that when they come into the library or when they're on their own time, to have that choice is very important. Studies have shown this over the years, that autonomy is critical. You might notice, um, and I hope all the librarians do this, and I know I do this, whenever a parent and a child come in together, I talk to the child, Mm, and I'm not trying to ignore the parent, but when the adult says I'm looking for something for my child, I start talking to the child right away, and I'll say, what do you like? And the parent will answer many times, (laughs) and I just keep talking to the child, and because it's really important that they are interested in what the reading material is. The other thing that's important to a child, and this really increases as they get older, and for some reason, especially for boys, studies have shown, is relevance. How is this even important to me? Why am I reading this classic? Why am I reading this Mm -hmm, book? mm -hmm. It needs, you need to help them if they don't see what it means to them in their lives. If they're having to read a book that's been assigned to them for some reason, or even if you wanna share with them a beloved book, You need to make it relevant to them and to their life somehow. And the great news is is that um, we, as children's librarians, can search our catalog and help you find picture books or even nonfiction books for the youngest readers. So if you have a kindergartner, even a pre-kindergartner, who loves mollusks, I've got a book for you. It's called About Mollusks, (laughs) and it's by Catherine Sill, and it's a wonderful... you got the author down, too. (laughs) You know this book, yeah. (laughs) Catherine Sill and her husband, Jonathan Sill, do great nonfiction, very simple, basic books for children about topics like mollusks, arachnids, marsupials, and then deserts and habitats Mm. and things. So there's a book out there. Yeah, I think it's so important, uh, like you said, to let our children or let your kids choose what they want to read. I also know that there's a lot of pressure on parents to make sure that their kids are reading at what they feel to be either an appropriate level, reading level wise, or one that's even just a little bit more challenging to feel like their kids are constantly getting better at the skill of reading. How do you navigate that? Is one more important than the other? Like if a kid comes up and and has a book that you know they're going to love, but honestly, they should have been reading it maybe two or three grades ago. Where do you feel about that? The number one thing to make a child a better reader is to have them read. That's number one, and there are studies that is not opinion. The more they read, 
The more they enjoy reading, the more they will read, the better they'll get at reading. The other issue with reading levels is that often parents come in and they've been told by the child's teacher that the child needs to be reading at a certain level. And that can be challenging um, for everyone involved. One challenge here in the library is that we serve three different public school districts Mm -hmm. and a couple of parochial districts, and they use different systems for gauging their children's reading levels. Right. So I'm familiar with the Lexile level, but there's more than that even, I know. There's Lexile, there's Fontas and Pinnell, and there's Accelerated Reader, and there's more. So depending on what school your child goes to, your school may have a completely different level. So when you come in and tell me that your child is a K or needs books at 4.5 or is a 670, um, there are different ways that we can help you and that you can even um, do some work yourself if you wanted to at home. One would be to go to the website of Lexile.com or to the Accelerator Reader website that your school offers And to do um, a search, you can do range searches for your child's Lexile level. Here's the tricky part. These are mathematical Mm -hmm. algorithms. And so if you have a kid who's a strong reader, the things that will come up may be really off the map and appropriate for your child, either for their interest level or how long it is or the content. Books that are definitely books that are written for adults will come up. They don't differentiate. The other thing that's interesting about Lexile levels, it's based on the complexity of the words and the complexity of the sentences. And so often picture books will come up Hmm. as high Lexile books because picture books have very rich language. They use vocabulary in picture books that is generally not used often in everyday Mm -hmm. life because they're trying to paint a picture in just a few words. And this is my plug for picture books for older readers. Please do not stop reading the picture books to them. The language in picture books, as I said, is very rich, and vocabulary is a really critical element. You can continue reading picture books to children, as far as I'm concerned, for as long as they'll let you. I'm 32 years old, and I still appreciate a good picture book every (laughs) now and then. (laughs) They're really terrific. But again, I keep coming back. Your child is being taught how to read, how to decode, how to comprehend in school. They are ensuring that your child reads material at his or her level. That doesn't mean your child shouldn't read material at his or her level outside of school, but really the point of the public library and the point of that recreational reading is to help them learn to love reading. So anyway, the librarians can help you. We do not have our books arranged by the levels that the school have, unfortunately. The schools really have the luxury to do that. But we do, as I said, Lexile.com. Um, through one of our databases, our online databases, Novelist, you can see what the Lexile is or search. We've also been going in for about two years now and manually entering into our catalog the Fontas and Pinnell level, which are those number levels, hmm. A, B, C, D. Let me ask you a question. I, I imagine a lot of parents might have been in this situation where the, the child's maybe not with them when they're at the library and they, need, they want to pick out some books to bring home to their child. How long do you give it for a kid if they don't seem to be into it? I know we don't want to force a book on a child, but how, how long should we say, okay, I, I, I feel like you've given it a fair shot and you don't like it? Or should we as parents be allowed to say, I think you should give it a few more pages? Or um, I think initially, especially when you have little children, when you're reading with them, notice I don't say reading to them, when you're reading with yes, them, yeah. um, First of all, understand that they're going to wander around, their, their attention is going to be distracted, and you can keep reading or keep engaging with them or skip a few pages. But the bottom line, interestingly enough, little children especially, toddlers and babies, when they have a negative experience with an adult and an activity or an adult and a, a thing, an object, they will turn the negative feeling toward the object, not the adult, Hmm. which is good because we have to do things that our children don't like sometimes. True. So you don't ever want reading or any kind of learning or play experience with your child to be like, okay, we have to do this. We have to finish this. Really let them lead you with that. Hmm. Um, You can, you know, even though they're wandering around, they still might be listening, but if they really are not interested, you know, move on to the next thing. I'm thinking actually of... This is a, a, um, autobiographical to me. I, I was a kid that did not enjoy reading when I was in grade school. 
it felt like I just couldn't find any book that I was really into. And um, I guess I'm wondering for those parents who might have a kid just like that. And I guess I am kind of picturing someone a little bit older in this right. case. Okay. In, in this sort of case, chapter book realm where they just can't seem to get into the any book. Um, I think there's a couple things to keep in mind. And I think that's a question that is um, really critical now, especially when children and young adults have so many things competing for their attention and mm-hmm. their eyeballs and their time. One is rethink what reading means to you. Hmm. Reading print is reading. We have magazines. We have, as I said, nonfiction, graphic novels, and chapter books, even picture books, whatever. Be open to whatever they think reading is and what they read. Number two, see again if you can tie it into something that's relevant to them. Mm. You know, if you Mm. have a kid that loves video games, we have biographies about video game inventors. We have books about how to become a video game Mm -hmm. designer. Um, we even have, I think, like a Minecraft handbooks that right. would count as, you know, you're still reading, exactly. but you're reading about how to play the game. How to play the know? game. So, again, that that open-mindedness, this is especially critical with boys. Mm-hmm. Um, again, for whatever reason, boys' reading drops off precipitously at fourth grade. Yeah, it was me. The other thing, too, if I could say one thing, is do not make reading a punishment or do not make it the chore that you get to then play your video game if you read <laughs> yeah. for 20 minutes. It, it should never be that you have to do this terrible thing reading in order to do this fun thing. I think the other critical thing is to be a good model. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure many of you, you know, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I do not have time to read. I, I certainly can't sit and read. But again, this is a really important part of your child's development. And there are so many things that you do spend time doing to encourage them to be a good student and a good learner. And this is one that you can do and enjoy yourself, yeah, too. Yeah. What I'm hearing you saying a lot of is make sure that you're picking stuff that's of interest to your child. Um, and I think that's an excellent, excellent point. The other aspect, I think, of reading often, though, is sharing what you love. So I have books that I read as a kid that I loved. How does that fit in to recommending books to your child? Is there a level of humility that we need in understanding that the books that I loved as a kid just might not be a book that my child will enjoy? I think that's something that's important. And just like anything else in a family, sometimes the kid gets to choose what to do. Sometimes the parent gets to choose what to do. Sometimes another sibling gets to choose. So when you're reading with your child, I think it's totally legitimate and a great idea to say, this is what I loved when I was your age. That's making it relevant to them in a way is that you can talk about what you were like when you were their age and do they feel the same way about the book or do they feel differently, which is okay, and make it okay for them to feel differently Mm -hmm. about it and why. But again, it's that making it relevant, um, giving them the choice to say, I don't really like it, Um, it's not really enjoyable to me, and to put it down. And you should give your children the same permission to do that. But similarly, I've also had the experience where I – tried a book and I didn't enjoy it, but then I tried it as an audio book and I loved it, Mm. you know, or I tried it at a different time in my life. So, you know, just because um, you've tried something once and that's a good thing for them to learn too, doesn't mean you're not going to like it forever. Let's talk a little bit about uh, age appropriate content, probably especially important for parents of older children the ones who maybe want to venture into territories we might not be very comfortable with. Uh, how do we navigate that, especially if it, I mean, the kid does seem interested in this, you know, yeah. but we're not sure if they should be reading it. Uh, is there a way to quickly surmise the content of a book if you're a parent without having to actually read it yourself? There are a couple recommendations that I have. I have parents come in all the time and say, is this book right for my child? And I realize quickly what they're getting at is that they're concerned that the content isn't appropriate. The challenge there is that what is appropriate to you may be wildly inappropriate to me and vice versa. So a couple things that I suggest parents do. One is um, there's a great website out there called Mm commonsensemedia.org, all one word, commonsensemedia.org. And they rate books, video games, movies, all sorts of things. And what I like about this particular site is that they don't have an angle or an agenda. They're not coming at it from a certain perspective. But they rate the books or the material on all sorts of categories and give you very specific. So they'll talk about the issue of language, consumerism, violence, sexuality, drug use, and they'll rate it on those areas. And then when you click on the link, um, when you click on the little link to 
sex or violence or whatever, it gives you specifics. And mm. it says, this is what happens okay. in this book. Another resource is the reviews, the book reviews. Mm. Um, one of the things that is really neat about our library catalog is that you can see once you, if you look at a particular book, if you scroll down in the record, the entry for that book, you'll see reviews, annotations, and they will indicate grade. And I would say if you had a book that your if your child had a book that they were really eager to read and you just weren't sure, again, it's something that you can always do together. I remember I had a parent once, um, this was a couple years ago and in a different library, whose second grader, for whatever reason, really wanted to read The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, mm. which is a teenage book. It's a YA book. And so the mom and the daughter read it together. The mom read it to the daughter and basically would just skip things Uh that she didn't think were appropriate. So that's always an option. And then if you're really concerned about it, I mean, maybe it is something that you say, you know what, this is just something we wait for. Like you wait to get, you know, a driver's license or your ears pierced. Great. Well, uh, Melissa, I just want to thank you for being on the podcast and lending your uh, wisdom to this very useful parenting topic. I know I learned a ton. Well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And if I could make one plug, um, one of the biggest things we do here at the library is our summer reading program. Most people think that's for kids, and it certainly is. But um, for years, this library's had a summer reading program for teens and adults Mm -hmm. as well. And there's probably no better way to encourage your kids to read during the summer than for you to read as well. A whole family. Get in that summer reading club. And the prizes for adults are pretty awesome. Um, So our theme this year is Exercise Your Mind. Mm. And uh, you're never too old to exercise your mind. So Very good. We'll, we'll leave on that. And so if you would like to uh, check out our collection or definitely come in. When does it start? June 1st, right? June 1st is summer reading kickoff. So June 1st is when summer reading come, uh, kicks off. But you can come anytime definitely. after that. Come in, uh, explore any of the library's collections online. You can do that by visiting our website, www.cooklib.org. And um, you can easily find our catalog search through that. Uh, remember to visit Shelf Life, the library's blog, where we blog about books, movies, music, genealogy, local history, and more. That blog can be found over at shelflife.cooklib.org. And um, as always, if you'd like to get in touch with us about anything you've heard, if you've got further questions for Melissa even, you can write to us. Write to us at webmaster at cooklib.org. We would be happy to uh, respond to you. And if you like what you're hearing on this podcast, support us. Uh, Share it with your friends and leave us a positive rating on iTunes. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. Thank you.